Cultist Simulator is a hybrid deck-building, text-based, roguelike, role-playing game in which you take on the role of a nondescript character who by chance stumbles upon cryptic notes and discovers a world beneath the mundane. Throughout the course of his journey, he will uncover mysteries, secret locations, alternate histories, and powerful arcane lore, as well as powerful arcane artifacts. These discoveries have the potential to summon demons, drive lesser minds mad or into despair, and have the potential to ascend him into a higher level of consciousness. In order to achieve this, he must start a cult, recruit members, and through these members, discover the path to his ultimate goal. The game's progression is driven via narrative as you uncover more cards and use them towards your end. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's dive right in. We can win this. When you start right away, you're greeted with the first and only screen you'll see. The entire game takes place on this tabletop, as if the character every night is creating cards and placing them upon the board to plot his next action. You'll first see one card in one block. These blocks are called verbs. More unlock as you progress, and very soon you'll unlock all of them. At the bottom, you'll see your stats, which are health, passion, reason, and funds. Each have their use and can be used in multiple ways. The most crucial is funds. If this drops to zero, you haven't long before the game is over. Swiftly, you realize that your funds slowly are consumed via the passage of time. You may want to initially grind stats so that you won't be suffering later. The early game isn't very intense, and as long as you make enough funds, you can focus on yourself. I spent a good portion of the early game obtaining more health, reason, and passion. Though RNG can put a damper on the grinding of these, if you're meticulous, you can have 5 health, or passion and two reason before you even begin your occult studies. You may consider this taking some of the challenge from the game, but the game can throw many RNG factors which will seem painfully unfair. I say it's worth every advantage you can muster. Soon after the grind, you'll be able to search the city as you work either via painting, a mundane job, or by physical labor. Searching will swiftly yield a bookstore and an auction house. These two locations are designed to give you your initial low-level lores and a few translation texts, if you're lucky. The potential translation texts you can find are Sanskrit, Greek, and Latin. Simply work your job as you earn the funds to continuously visit the bookstore and then the auction house. Once the bookstore is out of stock, the last book it yields is a useless text that can be sold via the auction house. Then begin visiting the auction house and buy every single book other than translation text you already own. There's no point in a second Greek translation, for example, as you can only become a scholar of a language once. Never pass up on any other book. You may obtain collections of poetry or essays as well. Each one of these will have the potential to increase either passion or reason by one. Once both the bookstore and the auction house are emptied, you'll potentially have over seven passion and reason, and in many cases, eight or nine. When buying and auctioning for books, don't neglect to keep searching the city or dreaming. You can get the first dream door of the wood simply by dreaming with passion and using the initial lore the game throws at you. Entering the wood gives you occult scraps and furtive truths. You'll want five of each. Searching the city will allow you to meet people that will later become cult members or patrons. By the time you're done, you'll have a potential army of followers and, if you're lucky, have found all four patrons. You'll know you've found every one potential because the next person you find is called Case of Mistaken Identity. If you find this card, you can find no new people. There is a finite amount of people who can become cult members in the game. The four patrons are members that you can talk to in order to get commissions on certain levels of lore. If you can fulfill their requests, they'll reward you in otherworldly currency. You can use this in rights or in the auction house for more traditional funds. So now that we've grinded stats, found and read every arcane book in the city, and have all of the interesting people at our disposal, what next? Now you need to found your cult. Here you need to decide which lore you'll be using and how to upgrade it. I probably need to discuss lore before we go on. The game has eight classifications of lore. Moth, Lantern, Forge, Edge, Winter, Heart, Grail, and Lock. Technically there's a ninth lore, Book, but we can ignore that for now. Each lore follows an esoteric set of rules, in which it trumps one lore and is trumped by another. Moths are attracted to a lantern. A lantern's brightness cannot compare to the forge from which it was made. The blade survives the forge and is tempered. Even the blade becomes brittle to the force of winter, yet winter is conquered by the warmth of the heart. The heart is swayed by the pleasures of the grail, the drink and sex. These pleasures are fleeting, like that of the moth, and depart swiftly. Each lore can be denied should it be behind a locked door. 
Lore can be upgraded by supplying two lesser lore. Two level two lores of the same type when combined will make a level four lore. In consequence, two level fours of the same type will make a level six and so on, up to level 14. You can also use adjacent lore from before or after the given lore, as long as you remember which trumps which. If you wish to upgrade Moth, you can use two lesser Moth or a Moth and a Grail of the same level. Thus, a level 2 Grail and a level 2 Moth will make a level 4 Moth. However, one level 2 Moth and one level 2 Lantern will make a level 4 Lantern. To understand this, it becomes really easy to know how you want to upgrade your lore. One lore trumps all. Lock. Combining lock with anything always produces lock. Consequentially, you can also research any lore with reason to break it down into its two lesser constituents. For instance, researching level 6 moth with reason will break it down into two level 4s, etc. All of the initial books and lore you found from the auction house in Moorlands are now ready to be combined and upgraded. Make your selection and proceed accordingly. With luck, you'll have level 6 in every lore, with the exception of a few stragglers. The relevance in deciding which lore your cult practices is the ability to upgrade cult members who have that lore to level 3. This will give them a 10 aspect in that lore. Game mechanics wise, this means that they will never fail on a mission if that lore is required. Other times throughout the game, it means that you can send them to a cult business and they have a very high chance of success for whichever lore that is. Be careful, if it's not on a mission, level 10 does not always mean success. Occult lore found in the Mansus is how you discover locations that need to be explored. These locations are where you find artifacts and consumables. When you begin any expedition, you'll be able to select a leader, an assistant, and up to two funds. If things go awry during the expedition, the first member to die is the leader. It may be wise to put the leader as a summons or a hireling. Once the initial mission cycle has concluded, you'll be asked to either place another follower or funds for the journey. This is where you can click on any icon at the bottom to know what exactly to expect and what members of your cult will be best suited for this mission. I hope you've leveled up your members to at least disciple before you do these missions. You'll need these skills to survive. Once you've exhausted all of the lore in each door, you'll need to progress to the next door to get stronger lore throughout the Mansus. There's a certain method to opening or passing beyond each door in the Mansus. To find the wood door, simply dream with passion in any lore. To re-enter, dream with passion. To find the white door, dream of the wood door with level 6 lantern. To enter the white door, dream with health. To go beyond it, dream with your accession card. The stag door will be found, but can only be opened with level 6 moth. To enter it afterwards, dream with reason. To go beyond the stag door and hit the spider door, you must dream with either level 8 lock or lantern. The spider door can be entered only when dreaming with a prisoner sacrifice. To go beyond it, to the peacock door, you must dream with level 10 lantern or lock. The final door, the peacock door, can only be entered if you find one of two artifact mirrors in the game. When you find them, they're both broken. You can fix them by using a cult member who has forge. Speak with him and use the topic of the broken mirror. He'll tell you what you need to fix it. Finally, your ascension card is how you win the game. To upgrade it from level 1 to level 2 and begin your route, simply dream on it with either health, reason, or passion to choose one of the three ascension paths. To get it to level 3, you simply must dream on it with the stag door. From level 3 to level 6, it will progress on its own if you have the right consumable for it. It will never degrade below level 3, but it won't get to 4, 5, and 6 if it can't consume the right resource. Once you've obtained all the items you require, it's merely a time-waiting game for your ascension to reach level 6. If you've chosen power, it should already be there. If you've chosen enlightenment or sensation, you'll need prisoners. At this point, you should have any number of pawns at your disposal, so this shouldn't be an issue. Once you've got all pieces of the puzzle together, it's time to ascend.
This can be a very vexing experience, and a game like this isn't for everyone. You can also make errors that you aren't aware of earlier in the game, which can lead to a lot of late game grinding in order to make up for lost progress. However, this game has something unique and is worth your investment of time.